Hi everyone, this is Niall from amstradnoob.com and today we're going to talk about the Dandinator and see how to program it from a Windows computer. Okay, so to get you started, you can head over to amstradnoob.com and you'll see that I have a blog post there where I link to the driver that you're going to need, the Java 8 SE runtime, the Dandinator ROM software itself, and a link to a website that contains some Amstrad games. There are many uh, websites out there. I just linked to the first I found on Google. So let's get started with installing the driver first, then we'll install Java, and then we'll install the ROM, and then we'll have a look at the software itself before actually connecting it up to a CPC. So I've already downloaded the um, software here, and let's go ahead and install the driver from the Chinese website. And as you can see, it looks like this. The driver date is 2019. You've very few options, install, uninstall, and help. So let's go ahead and install. I'm logged in as a local administrator on this UEFI-based computer. And as you can see, it says the drive is successfully pre-installed in advance. I presume they mean the driver. Uh, and this doesn't necessarily mean that it worked. Just be aware of that. So let's click OK. And let's close that one. Right, the next thing we want to do is to install Java. That's this one here. Um, remember, I've linked to the uh, actual downloads in my blog post. And in fact, in that blog post, I show you all these steps, uh, including some screenshots so that you're not too lost. Okay. So the next thing is the Java installation. So let's do that. Now you need Java installed before you run the actual Java download from Daniel, the guy who created the Dandinator hardware. And he's a very helpful guy. I've emailed him a few times with my issues and he was very kind to respond. So after we've installed Java, we can then go ahead and run the actual Java file. Um, and see what it looks like. Then I'll point out some of the the main points of the user interface because it's it's confusing when you first start looking at it, and it doesn't get much easier until you've used it a few times. Okay, so Java is now installed. So once you've installed the driver and you've installed Java. The next thing to do is to double click on the Dandinator uh, jar file, and that's what we're going to do now. And there it is. Um, not too much to look at. You've got a, a graphic of the Amstrad basic screen that you would see when you turn one on. 64K, so it's probably a 464. Um, we've got this Dandinator logo that you can change. I haven't tried changing that yet. You've got some text here that you can also change. And down here, you've got a list of, of games that you can populate. And you've got an R and P here. The R refers to the amount of ROM space that you're using up in the Dandinator itself. And it comes with 512K. That's the um, Dandinator Mini, one that I have at least. And then the P stands for pokes, pokes that you've added. So as you add more pokes and uh, uh, games, you will see this these uh, progress bars filling up. And if it goes to red, then I think it means you've got too much. All right, so let's have a look at some of the settings up here. At the top, we have File, Extra, and Help. And in the File menu, you can import a ROM set. And the next option is to Merge. So the first option, what does it mean, basically? It means that if you go ahead and start adding some games uh, when it's connected to a CPC, you'll end up getting a game list here. Um, and once you're happy with that, 
um, and you're, you've tested it on the Dandonator and you've written the changes to the Dandonator, you can then go ahead and click on Create ROM. It will become highlighted. And when you create that ROM, it will then be saved to wherever you save it to. So I did that previously. Um, so let's go ahead and try importing that one. Uh, this one here, I think. Let's try it. Okay, so this, yeah, there's a few games there. So as you can see, um, here are a bunch of games. And this is the view you would see on the CPC itself. And if you were to select a game, for example, this is what you will see. You will see what the game looks like. Um, you'll get some information about the type of uh, hardware it's for and, and so on. And as you can see, with this particular ROM set, I'm sort of like three quarters of the way full. Uh, 13 of 20 total games. Now, you'll also notice that the Dandonator lists um, the K amount here. And I think that's when you select the actual uh, hardware compatibility in preferences. So let's take a look at preferences for a minute. So I selected 464, uh, CPC 464, when I was creating my uh, games uh, list on the Dandonator. But I guess if I had selected CPC 6128, when I imported one or more games, those games would be marked with that particular um, they would say 128K instead of 64K. So you can do that and that's how to do it. Right, so what are, what other options are interesting and important here? Um, preferences is important because that is where you're going to set your serial port once it's working. Now at the moment you will see that I've got COM3 and COM4 listed there. And they are actually the COM ports that are already in this computer. So let's bring up my device manager. And if we look here under ports common LPT, you can see I already have uh, COM3 and COM4. They are the ones that are built into the, the, the hardware. And as you can see, they're Microsoft Windows, uh, Microsoft drivers. And under device description, you can actually click on hardware ID and you can see, okay, this is a Bluetooth device. This is not the um, connection to the Dandonator, not at all. So neither of these are the actual correct one. But anyway, we haven't connected this to the, to the CPC yet. So this is good for you to see exactly what it looks like before you do. All right, so let's see, was there anything else we needed to? Okay, so I have uh, reset the Dandonator software. Um, so that I show you exactly from start to finish uh, how we can add some games in there and also how we can connect this computer to the Dandonator itself. So hopefully the video camera up there is capturing that. So basically I'm connecting a USB cable to the computer and I tried four cables before I got one that actually works uh, for the Dandonator. I think it's called mini USB. So as you can see, this one is connected to the back of the Dandonator. The Dandonator is plugged into a Super C664. And I'm going to turn this on and hopefully we'll get some power. Okay, so what you might or might not see on the screen is uh, what I have on the Dandonator right now. And it is basically that ROM that I showed you earlier. So let's see, did we actually get anything in the device manager in this one? So as I said, I had problems with this before. Yeah, we're lucky. So as you can see now, um, the Dandonator is showing up as USB serial CH340. COM5, and you can verify that by double clicking on it and then clicking on the driver. And the driver is dated 2019-01-30. So we know that that is the driver for the chipset that's inside the Dandelator. So that's fantastic. That means that the computer is seeing the Dandelator uh, when the CPC is powered on. 
as you can see from the light here and from the LCD there. So let's go back to the software and if we look under preferences and go to loader, you will see that the serial port doesn't automatically pick the port, it's up to you to go and pick it. And at the moment it's still COM3 and COM4, so that's because I had the software running when I plugged in the uh, USB cable. So if we click on this refresh icon here, uh, hopefully, yes, it does, there's COM5. So we revealed in Device Manager that it's COM5, and then in Settings, we, in Preferences, I should say, we set it to COM5 also. So that's it. I mean, now you're done. You can basically start uh, reprogramming your Dandemator. So let's try and do that. Um, this particular one right here, as you can see, it's a blank slate. So whatever we do with this, uh, we'll end up on this uh, Dandemator line here. So let's click on the plus and we'll point it to some Amstrad games that I have. Uh, let's just pick a few Arkanoids and Barbarian, for example. And maybe this, yeah, like so. Alright, so we'll select those games. And remember, in my preferences, I had selected this as uh, 464, so they'll all show up as 64K games. And we can test that theory after these ones are imported. Um, and um, try one as 6128 compatible. So this symbol down here means that the software is basically importing those games. It takes some time and you think nothing's happening, but if you see that little spinning circle, it means it's doing something. So don't panic. Let's try again. Uh, no, I was too impatient. There they are showing up. Yeah, okay. So let's let it finish loading them. And as you can see, oh, look at that. It says 128. So I was wrong. It must be the size of the game uh, when it's being imported that automatically sets it to 128K. Well, now I know. Nice. Okay, so now we have a bunch of games imported. Uh, there should be eight. As you can see, the R for the ROM itself is going up in size. It tells us we have eight of 20 total games. We're using 35% of the space. And if you click on a game, like I said, you'll see the first screen in that game if it was running on the Amstrad. Uh, there's Arkanoid, for example. And there's Classic Arkanoid, which is such a great game. Okay, cool. And you'll also see that there's this poke screen here. And if you click on plus, you can add pokes and so on. But I'm not going to do that. Uh, this is how you can do it, right? But I'm not going to do it in this particular video. Okay, what did I want to show you next? Right, when you're happy with the games list that you have decided to pick, you need to write uh, those games to the Dan Donator itself. And to do that, you need to put the Dan Donator in loader mode first. So to do that, uh, on the screen, you can see it says version 2.3, loader, L for loader, USB game, okay, and then it will show you the page uh, two if you click on the arrow, right? So we're going to load some new games onto the Dan Donator, so we're going to press L on the CPC and you get this EEPROM writer, EEPROM writer, right? And at the moment it looks pretty dull and boring, but it will change in a minute, I hope. So. Here in the software on the computer, you've got these two little balls here uh, in the first uh, square. And if you click on the second ball, if you click on the second ball, it shouldn't crash like it just did for me. Okay, I just had a problem when I tried to enable writing mode uh, in the down donator. Basically, it crashed and it crashed, and it crashed, and it crashed. And the error was an exception access violation 0, X, C, multiple zeros, and a 5. So I googled that and found that some other people had already had that problem 
and thankfully um, Dan, who has created the Dan Donator, um, released a new version which fixes the problem. So all these logs here basically uh, are the log files that are generated when it crashes. And you'll see the error is this exception access violation. And yeah, wasn't very exciting. But the solution is to download the 2.4 version of the Dandonator software. So I will link to that instead in my blog post after I've done with this video. So I'm going to start this one up, load a few games on again like we did before and uh, see where we go with that. So let's just check our preferences. And loader serial port com5, that's correct. So let's add a few games. Do that. We'll add same games. Because these ones will add Barbarian as well. Why not? And then click on open. And it will take a few, a few uh, moments, minutes, for adding the games. That's what those spinning circles mean. This time I'll be a bit more patient. And hopefully, if everything goes well, this time, we'll actually be able to see the whole process working. So in the meantime, what I've done on the Dandinator, or on the CPC I should say, is I've pressed L to get the EEPROM uh, writer. Do I have a new issue? No. Thank you. Okay, so here they come. Should have nine games shortly. Yes, we do. Nine games. Lovely. And we even have a 128k game there as well. Okay. Fantastic. So now let's try and do what we tried to do, what I tried to do 20 minutes ago before it started crashing. So, um, in order to write games, we press L on the CPC to get it in this mode. And here we press on the second circle and it should bring up the EEPROM writer on this side. And it does, which is great. Okay, let's try what I tried on this one, which was uh, go back to here and then to here. And now, look at that, without me doing anything else, it started to write to the Dandonator. I don't know if that's by design or if it's a bug. Seems kind of buggy to me, or maybe it was just thinking about the games before it started uploading them. But as you can see, we've got a progress bar. We've got the block telling us uh, what it's doing. It's transferring and receiving. And hopefully it'll be done soon. So there's 32 blocks to write. And when everything is completed, the Dandinator should reboot the CPC and we should see the list of games that we have here on the CPC coming from the Dandinator, which we have just programmed. And if that works, then it's a success, thankfully. Twenty twelve to go. Go on CPC, you can do it. CPC or the first button on the Dandinator itself. 
remember, I got this one from Hobby Retro. They're not sponsoring me in any way, but their stuff is very cool. Well it's well it's well All right, thanks everyone for watching my video. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. And if not, comments and tell me. All right, see you in the next one.